All right. I think I'm live. All right. Peace, power, and profit, everybody. Welcome to Urban Economic Empowerment Show. I'll be your host, Mo, today. Let me see. Let me make sure it's good on the YouTube. Make sure we rocking and rolling. I oh, I started a new channel, everybody, because, okay, it's, it's going on Bro Garfield's side. Let me see what's going on the other side. I started a new channel because my other channel was hacked. And I don't know if it's going to pick up on there or not, but I hope that it does. I'm trying to get that right. Um, not hack, but those little, they, those little, what I, I call the little sexy folks <laughs> kept um, coming on the page. And, and so the channel was not growing at all. I, was, I got stuck at 751. So I was like, okay, I'm going to have to start this party all over again. So that's what I did. And that's why you probably see me in the, in the uh, chat with a new YouTube channel and that's what happened. That's going on. So I try to just start it all over and see where we go. Um, so tonight we've got a very good show this evening. I'm going to be interviewing Chris Logic and his company. But before I do that, I want to kind of do a summary of what happened on last Wednesday. So I'm trying to get back in the business um, manner again, live streaming because a lot of individuals have been hitting me up about contracting. And one of the things I'm finding out, writing business plans or cost analysis, they're, they're not really familiar with what's being asked. So we're kind of coming out of the, the era, I like to call it, of PPP, AIDL. That money has gone, you know, it has been spent or you didn't get it. Uh, or in those who did get it, it was kind of like pushed them into the Hall of Fame and then now they're back to the Little Leagues. So now they're really having to prove their numbers to try to get lines of praise. So I, I'll say this, I'll start it off like this. So I was listening to a CPA and he explained, so for those business owners out there who are wondering like, why aren't they able to get uh, either a line of credit or a business loan? It's probably because you receive the EID, you either receive the PPP and you have not gotten forgiven yet, or you received the EIDL and you have not paid off the loan yet. And so the news in the air is that the government has first dibs. Um, they open up UCCs on, on all the companies who have EIDL. And if it has not been paid back in full, they have first dibs on the funding. Therefore, the banks are reluctant to giving you money. And so one of the things the banks did during that time was that they used their reserve funds to fund businesses in hopes that they would get repaid by the government. But in order to get repaid by the government, the, the business owner had to either become forgiven 100% or if they've been partially forgiven, they have to have paid it all back in order for the government to refund the bank. So therefore some of their money is very low. And so if you have an outstanding loan out there with SBA, then nine out of 10, you're not gonna get a business loan. Um, you might wanna do your research on that. Some people are sadly disappointed, but that's how it goes. So if you've taken that funds and you thought it was, oh, this is free money, you know, I'm, I'll just take it and I'll go and spend it on pleasurable things versus using it as capital reserve in your business, um, or maybe you use it to purchase assets in your business to further your business along. Um, and then that's cool too, because it's going to help you make money in the business. That's fine. Just make sure whatever you receive that you pay it off before you go to the bank and try to get along. Because if you get denied and they don't tell you why, nine out of 10, this is why. You still have outstanding liability out there with the U.S. government who takes precedent over any funds or collateral that you may have. You heard it here first. <laughs> All right. So, so my objective over the next few weeks is to talk about knowing your numbers. I used to have a friend, she used to say, the person that um, knows your, uh, the person that knows your numbers, the person that knows your money owns your money. And that person should be you. I find that a lot of, a lot of, people who start businesses, whether they're freelancers, they're independent contractors, maybe they're doing uh, call center work out there and they're contracting, they're getting 1099s uh, and they're, so they are sole proprietors um, or they have started an LLC 
they're doing Schedule C's or their LLC and they're doing uh, S Corp or maybe their partnership. They have to know financial reports is like over their head. If Even if you have a, an accountant, a tax preparer, you still should be excuse me, <clears throat> you still should be familiar with these reports. And so I talked about that last week. I encourage you to go back and look at that video. So this week, and I need to change some dates, but this, this is how I kind of wanted to run it. But I, I thought it fit that I'm just going to kind of work it all in. Um, I want to talk about the target audience, but I'm going to run real quick and summarize what I did last week. And then I want to interview Chris because Chris is doing a really good job in his business. And I think his audience um, who he's targeting. Uh, I'll let him tell you all about that in a minute. So let's go forward. So these are the financial statements I talked about last week. I'm just going to mention them. I'm not going to go into details like I did last week. Um, the balance sheet, the income statement, statement of cash flow, and the profit and loss. I showed how you can go to Google Spreadsheet. You can, you can find a template already done. If you're doing this stuff manually, I showed that if you were using... QuickBooks, cash flow, I mean, uh, QuickBooks, or if you're using my econ cash flow manager, or maybe you're using Gusto, possibly um, what's it called? ePay, um, Paycheck. There's so many softwares out there that you can use that will help you get these statements. If you're using, uh, so that when you connect your bank account or you link your bank account, to these softwares or these apps, it will produce this for you. But you actually, you have to pay some money in order to make this happen, or you can do it manually on the spreadsheet. The choice is yours. Whatever you choose, just know that once you start requesting from financial institution or lenders loans, they're gonna ask you for your financial statements. These are typically the ones that they are looking for. This is an example of what a balance sheet looks like. You can Google it in you in Google and look at images and you can see samples of balance sheets. It's just a matter of how you would like to set yours up. This is an example of an income statement. Kind of gives you samples of what it what it's looking for, or the, or the data or dollar amounts that they're looking for, where they go. This is an example of a statement of cash flow. And here's a sample of a profit and loss. All of these you could, can be seen in an actual Excel document. I'll show you one real quick on how to go and look for one. So, so if you were using Excel, right, you could put in the search box, you could put financial you can put financial statements, you can put financial, you can put business, but nevertheless, you will see all these different types of reports. This is an income statement here. You can, or you can just spell it out. You can do balance sheet. There's so much information that they give you or pre-prepare for you. And it makes it easy. And the, and the, um, the calculations are already included. You just have to place your numbers there. Right, so you'll see samples of balance sheets, income statement, and you can put in profit and loss. So, so this is where you could, this is where you can go to get these financial statements. And you can, you always go to any YouTube video. There's tutorials out there for everything, and you can walk yourself through and learn how to maneuver through these financial statements because you need this information for business. I spoke about um, a, uh, what was it, um, minutes. So at the beginning of the year, you should always do corporate minutes or either twice a year. So this is semi-annual. Uh, so people would ask, oh, what, at what time would a small business or one member owner do minutes? Well, you do corporate minutes anytime there's a significant event happening in your business or you want to report some type of change. So for example, we know that everybody do income tax every year, whether you follow it with your personal taxes with the Schedule C or you do a standalone, right? So that would be one time at the beginning of the year. And I would always say probably semi-annually um, or when something changes that affects your business. So the IRS 
this is the big change. And then we'll go into Chris. The IRS has changed the mileage rate for 2022. So the new mileage rate, not change it, but they've updated it. So the first half of the year from January to January 1st, 2022 to June 30th, 2022, the mileage rate will be the 58.5 cents. The mileage rate from July 1st to December the 31st, 2022 would be 62.5 cents. So the mileage rate has gone up four cents. And this is for business traveling. For medical and moving, which affects active duty military, it would be 22 cents. And that has gone up four cents, right? And then medical stays at 14 cents, all right? So those are two changes. So you can do corporate minutes and you can input, I mean, you can add that change into your, into your minutes and boom, you'd have it on file. Now, for those of you into government contracts, that's very important because they ask you that when you renew your certifications, where are your corporate minutes? They want to know that you keep it up and you understand what's going on in your business. You can also use it for trends. So when you're doing your financial statements and you notice, just like when we're investing and they do earnings reports those corporate minutes there they are um sharing with their shareholders the uh performances of the business you should do the same thing in your business right every quarter update yourself quarterly on what's going on in your business and yes i do know a lot about government contracts and so boom here it is on the iris website all right so I want to make sure I share that. So that's a summary of what happened on last week. So now let's get into this week. So this week, I want to talk about your target audience. There's many people that get into business and they don't know their target audience or they don't know how to make business work for themselves, right? They're, they're either mimicking someone else because they thought it was a good idea. So they're trying to do it as well. or um, they think that the only way to uh, have perks in their business is by just selling what they have. But there are so many ways that you can get perks back into your business. And so I chose for the Chris Logic for this interview because he has this unique way on how he maneuvers business. So started from, uh, I'm gonna ask him a series of questions. So started from, you know, the type of business he's in to how he used his investment vehicles or tools to aid his business. Um, I'm gonna, we're gonna get in, he's gonna get into all of that great stuff. And I'm gonna, I'm sure you guys are gonna find it very beneficial, especially if you are a sneakerhead. So help me. Welcome, Mr. Chris Logic Woods. <laughs> <laughs> Peace, God, profit, everybody. What's going on? All right, so let's let's get straight into it, Chris. Um, when tell us the name of your business and when do you start? And don't don't just tell us the name of your uh, your sneaker business. I want to know all the business that you're involved in, and when did you get started? Oh, okay, so. Let's start with the sneaker business. So I started my sneaker business, so to speak, actually last year, but I started collecting sneakers in 2020, like around May, because I thought like, okay, you know, let me see what the sneaker game is about right now. And I happened to go to YouTube and I just typed in, you know, you know, something random like, you know, New Georgia's come out, coming out or whatever. And I ran into this guy's channel name, Unbreakable Kicks. He's actually from Chicago, so Brandon might know him. But uh, I ran into his channel, you know, and I was kind of listening to everything he was saying, you know, and he like kind of does a rundown on, on how you can, you know, cop certain shoes, you know, all of the latest sneakers. So, you know, I kind of took that information and started using it to my own benefit. So that's how I kind of got started with that. Now, my econ, which is the premier, premier 
of everything. Um, I started with Mo and uh, Garfield's morning mo- morning money show back in what 2016, 2017. And that's also when I ran into or got in touch with Oba African Emporium. So all of this stuff kind of like came together, like, you know, kind of like year after year and, you know, so forth and so on. So um, that's one, the other side of the business. Now, I also am a part of a couple real estate projects and businesses as well. That's uh, ground rooted here in Houston. Um, and it's called like by the block. And uh, it's with a brother named Chris Senegal. So on a real estate side, you know, that's, you know, kind of like my background with that. And it's just something, like I said, it's just, I happen to stumble on and I was like, hey, uh, this is some real estate stuff. You know, let me kind of learn about this and see what this is about and kind of, you know, branch myself into, you know, different assets. Because originally I started with crypto. Crypto was the first thing I invested in because of a guy I knew and, you know, he kind of like pushed me into all of these different, you know, crypto Ponzi schemes with Bitcoin and, you know, all of that stuff. And uh, I also learned Forex too at the same time. So those were like the first couple skills that I, I kind of learned, but, you know, here I am today. So those are kind of like, you know, uh, a few of the business that, businesses that I'm involved in, you know, 24-7, this is all I think about. This is all I do, you know, on top of my, you know, my personal stuff. Let's talk about the sneakers business. Okay. What, who was the first, what was one of your objectives for that business? Mm-hmm. Um, you, you know what's funny? I, I started out with um, like a consumer mindset. Like as a kid, you know, I, I was a big Michael Jordan fan. You know, fortunately, I grew up, you know, in a family where they bought those type of stuffs on a daily. So, you know, my big cousin, he had all the connects. He had all the connects with the shoes. And so every Jordan that would come out, you know, I would be privy to getting because, you know, he had the love for shoes as, as, you know, as a young adult then. And, you know, it just kind of made me think like, you know, I have been, I haven't been away from the sneaker game for a long time. So, you know, let me get back in, you know, see what it's about and, you know, see where it goes basically. Right. So talk about how you promote. How do you promote this particular company? Are you for the sneakers? Yes. What makes it successful? How do you? Oh, um, well, I forgot another part of the business that, you know, I'm a part of. And, you know, that's on the investor side of the house. So I'm a stickler for Stash app and Acorns apps. Um, to, you know, spend my money as a consumer turned investor. Uh Uh-oh, we lost you. Uh, uh Uh-oh. Chris? Hello? Hey, I think this is Wi-Fi. Oh, okay. What's up, Sunny? How are you? <laughs> I'm great. I'm I'm listening to nothing but knowledge right now. <laughs> all right. And so sneakers and you know streaming wait. services and all of this other stuff is that you know it's an investor's mindset first. It starts mentally. So yeah, I'm spending my money, you know, on some of the top shoes, you know, that's out here on the market. But I know if I'm using these programs, you know, where these retailers are giving you like 44% invested if you, you know, shop with this link or 5% invested if you shop with this link or with this store. 
I don't see why I wouldn't do that. You know, that's just a, you know, uh, a open, you know, opportunity for me to make more money, you know, on my consumerism as an investor than, you know, having my regular bank account and, you know, they just taking the money and I'm really not getting anything back besides, you know, an emotional feeling like, okay, I got these shoes and I can't wait to wear them or I got this new jogging suit and I can't wait to wear it. And for me, you know, it's never really been personal about like, okay, I'm going to get every Jordan that comes out and, you know, I'm going to put them on feet. That's not, that wasn't my mindset. My mindset was, okay, I like this shoe. You know, I might keep it or I might sell it. It depends on how I feel. But as I went down the line, I'm like, okay, these shoes got a little demand. And shout out to AE for this because, you know, he helped me start seeing how the market is, you know, even with stocks, you know, and other assets. So I'm looking at Jordan sneakers and they got a whole, whole program or a whole system based off the same thing where like a Jordan sneaker is performing better than the S&P 500 in a year's time. So I'm like, well, hey, if I just buy this shoe, this hot shoe that everybody wants, that everybody can't get and hold on to it and the value increases over time and then I can sell it at any time and profit, you know, two to three, four hundred, five percent. You know, why not? I mean, I do that with a stock. Why I can't do it with this shoe? Especially when you have people who didn't get the shoe beating your inbox down, you know, asking how much, how much, how much. Why wouldn't you, you know, see that as an opportunity and capitalize on it? It's kind of like art. So, for instance, let's take it away from shoes for a second. Let's say, okay, I got my stash debit card. Let's say I go to Tesla right now and I buy a Tesla Model S. And I say, I got $50,000 on my stash card. Guess what? I can take that 50 grand that the Tesla Model S is gonna cost or whatever the cost is, cause you know, inflation crazy right now. Um, pay for it with my debit card, stash debit card. That would be crazy that I get some Tesla stock back at a Tesla store buying a Tesla car, opposed to, you know, doing payments and, you know, credit card swiping and, you know, all of this other stuff. We're just putting, you know, cash down. You get nothing. You get nothing from that. But if I can get, you know, 0.89%, you know, stock back off a of purchase that goes directly into the stock market, why would you not take that? As you've been a consumer, you've never had money, you've never had wealth, you've never owned a company, let alone a top 500 company, so you don't understand what it feels like being a shareholder or being in a new environment where you are with this certain group of people who are like the upper echelons of people in this society or in this world that owns an asset. Because anybody can go to the car lot and buy a car, just, you know, be done with it. But if right. I get something in return, like a top 500 company, like, like a Tesla, or maybe even an Apple or an Amazon, and you say, hey, I just got, you know, I just earned some stock. You know, by just swiping my card, you know, at the Apple store. Not even the store, online. Just say you shopping online. I mean, how many people can say that? You know, you got these Amex cars, American Express, Discover, and all these different type of cars, black car, and all of this. That's cool. You know, they give you their perks. We ain't knocking that. That's cool. But can that card give you? access to billions and trillions of dollars being poured in to where the, the top 1% has their money at in these companies. No. 
That's how it comes down to me. So you use so let me get ready. So you can't use hear you, so this, oh, you can't shoot. you you oh. can't hear her? no uh, for some reason my my microphone was on low okay so you use so the money you use to buy these sneakers on the screen mm -hmm. you put it on your stash card. And your stash card is cross connected to your Acorn, and you go to the Nike store and make the purchase, and you get the cash back on Acorn and stash. Absolutely. So I'm talking about. Let me uh, let me sign into mine so we can see. And you, as we can see, there's many stores just based off of here. So so really, you're doing two business. You're basically doing three things at one time. You purchase mm -hmm. your, your business. Mm -hmm. You are investing because the stock back that you receive from the purchase goes into your Acorn investment account as well as your stash investment account. Right. Now, Hold on. What Brandon talking about? Can you say that again? Oh, you want me to say it again? You said what I said, Brandon? Yes. Can you say that one part again? As far okay. as the stash going into acorns. Right. So he has a, a stash debit card, right? He has an acorn one as well. But the stash debit card, he will link to the acorn account. So you know how you can link your account your cards to those FINRA accounts? You mm -hmm. can you link the card to there. So when you purchase from Nike, you're buying it using your stash card, but you're but not, but you're logging on to Nike through your Acorn account. Does that right. make sense? Right. So yeah, because what Acorns has is called found money, right? Right. Let me um, yeah. Wait, so let's talk yeah. about it. I'm gonna mine. Okay, okay, yeah. So when you go to found money. Normally, they will show you, you know, different retailers and how much percentage you can earn on by shopping, right? So all you would do is click on that retailer or search the retailer you're looking for, click on it, sign it to your account. And from the time you sign in, you're taking advantage of, you know, whatever percentage they're, they're giving you invested into your account. So whatever you spend, 5% of that, or four percent, or three percent, or whatever the case of that money is going to go into your account, your Acorns account, that is. And not only that, so when you go to like Nike and you shopping, and you know you buying some socks, you buying some Nike Air Max, they kind of, they kind of not, they won't necessarily let you buy like you know top, you know top Jordans. But, you know, some Jordan shoes you can get. But, like, you know, the classic Jordans, they, they ain't letting you do that. But either way, you go on there, you buy you some work shoes, you know, or you buy you some slides for the summer or whatever the case, you know, you capitalize on that, you know, through Acorns. You paying with your status, status card, so you're getting Nike stock back. And there you go trifecta right so this is what you're talking about right here yeah there you go right there um once you get on uh, let's do you can look you can see everywhere that you can go and you can shop from and and the, the beauty of this some of some people are already shopping at these stores so really it's a it's twofold it's e-commerce both ways through the sneaker game through his um through the actual company, right? But then it's also through, so I get my Nikes. I come to my Acorn app and I go here. So you get 3% back to Nike and it'll say shop Nike. Now, mind you, your stash card is in your, um, you have to go here in your settings and set it up. So I don't want to open mine because I don't need nobody hacking into my account. But um, right. when you go into your settings, you link your stash card, your, your stock back debit card, right? So mm -hmm. once you log in, um, 
you log in through Nike. So, so sometimes people get confused and they'll go straight to the Nike website. And you think you get the credit through your account or your stash. You can't do it that way. You have to log in your Acorn account or your stash account and then go to that store. And then you assign in, you know, using your account, but it will all <laughs> log to that one, to that right. um, Acorn account. It makes right. sense. Mm-hmm. Brandon. Yeah. Yes. Right. So let me put here so we can see what took Chris. So these, these are the only Jordans that they have available right now. Just, through acorn so as he was saying you may not see those particular sneakers or the classic search you know yeah because nike nike has two apps the night the regular nike app and then you have sneakers app sneakers app is where they drop you know the hottest jordans right so is sneaker app on the acorn no that's not on acorns okay cool. unfortunately not however I still take the money regardless. Right. Uh, get it Get it how you live. And you'd be surprised who might like some of these sneakers. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> you know, so um, so that's that's one way. Another, and, and so Nike is, it's, you know, it's one of the companies that you can use. Um, of course, there's plenty, plenty of companies on here. Mm-hmm. Um, when I first joined my econ, Walmart was my favorite because you got, I think in my econ, I think you used to get like three or five percent from Walmart. So yep. I used to chill it on travel and Priceline. Oh man, mm-hmm. I had to go through that to book my flights because I got really cheap deals, right? right? But many people are shopping already using a lot of these sites um, mm-hmm. for purchase. So this is this definitely one look, Uber Eats, who a lot of people are ordering from uber eats um i think grubhub is on here i mean yep. and, and and sometimes people will say oh uh, now this is just from the website now you could also use your card you can use it to go into the stores mm-hmm. anywhere you shop you swipe that card guess what you get you're gonna get that little email let me see if i can screenshot it because i have done it i just did it um i just went somewhere and i had screenshotted the notification you get the notification on your phone and it lets you know hey you just got stocked back by using whatever particular company that you went to right Mm -hmm. and so it all goes back in and you would think some you know those are fractional shares and you know and and i wouldn't despise the small amounts because think about it you're not getting anything when you swipe that debit card Right. So any dollar amount matters. Any dollar amount matters. Um, all right. So that's one aspect of it. Uh, that's very beneficial. Also, if you having a hard time getting a bank account. You think the debit card is a good idea, Chris? Absolutely. Have, having a hard time getting a bank account. Boom. Start your investment account. As as uh, Brad African Emporium always say, I ain't seen nobody uh, giving you an interview. <laughs> 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 Get this stash card or this acorn card or um, Robin Hood or M1. Any right. of them. Right? So, Chris, if you, if you would like to discuss in reference to your sneaker business, from the mm-hmm. time you started, what will you say you started in 2022? 2021. I was last year. 2021. So uh-huh. from inception, from the time you started your sneaker business to now, how 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 have you grown or have you grown at all? Oh, I've grown exponentially. So well, I would say 2020 is when I unofficially started but you know just you know using um you know just using the fact that okay i don't want these shoes let me see how much they're going for and sell them so i kind of yeah what happened i was going to ask what Mm -hmm. size what men's size 
sells the most and what women's size sells the most? <laughs> oh, that's a tough one, man. Uh, that's a tough one. Um, I don't know what particular particular size sells the most. I would say bigger sizes are more in demand because normally you can get more money for them. Because so, like for men, it's like a ten through like thirteen or fourteen. Those mm-hmm. normally sell sell the most, um, and go go for most prices, uh, for higher prices. I should say. You because, have a question. Oh, go ahead. Who was that? You have a question in the cat chat from the great. He said, "Do you use bots to get the sneakers from sneaker app?" What? Do I use spots to get the sneakers? Yeah, the shoes from sneaker app. Uh, as far as just to get on them, yeah, I use you know different, different, different places. So JD Sports, Finish Line, Dick Sporting Goods, uh, the Locker, Champ Sports, um, Shoe Palace, you know whatever sh- sneaker retailers is in your area. Uh, you know you use their applications. And, you know, some of them have reward systems, kind of like Foot Locker. Foot Locker actually has a reward system to where, you know, you can you can enter the raffles, you know, for 40 sneakers. And, you know, the more you spend, the more points you have, the better your chance of winning. And, you know, basically, you know, securing that pair, you know, every time it drops. Um, Wait, slow down. Talk okay. about the- Talk about the rewards again. So, so okay. So, when they be offering you the rewards card at the counter, it's good to get the rewards card because you can use the rewards card to purchase sneakers. Is that what I said? No. So, oh, <laughs> everything everything is basically through the apps now. So, I'll start with like JD Sports and Finish Line. So, with them, they implemented a new system um, last year. Um, which is called exclusive access because before they used to do just raffles. They used to raffle, you know, the people names who entered. And if you got selected, you know, they will let you know on the app to, you know, redeem your selection and you come into the store and basically you secure your shoe. But then they changed that up to make it more fair. So, you know, for, you know, their shoppers, you know, that spend the most called exclusive access. So, and all of this stuff is kind of janky. You know, they got bugs on their apps and stuff that they need to fix. But basically what exclusive access is, is that, you know, it's bot free because I'll get into botting later, but basically, you know, they reserve a pair for you, for you to secure. And how you do that is that you have to collect 5,000 points within a year to, you know, have those, the perks of getting exclusive access. Now, lately they've, they've been, you know, more open to, you know, new customers and allowing them, you know, to take part of this as well. But that's basically how it's been. You know, you get exclusive access, you get points, you need to at least have 5,000 points to have like gold status or A-list status and you get it for a year. And that just basically shows that, you know, you basically are like a committed customer and you spend a lot with the company. So they reward you with certain perks. Um, Now that goes for JD Sports and Finish Line. Um, And with Foot Locker, Champ Sports and all the subsidiaries, they do something you know, what they call FLX rewards to where, you know, you earn points when you spend. And uh, I think back in 2020, early 2021, they also kind of changed their system as well to where, you know, once you got in the beginning, it was like once you had like at least a minimum of like 500,000 points, you basically hit on every sneaker, you know, that dropped. And, you know, later on down the road, they start changing it because, you know, a lot of new customers and, you know, other customers that didn't have that many points weren't really getting the opportunity to win, you know, on the raffle reservations. So they kind of open it up for everybody. 
So now anybody can win, but they still, you know, reward, you know, their customers that, you know, have a lot of points. Like right now I have like over a million points. And wow. yeah, so I dang near, you know, hit on every shoe that drops. Shit, so, y'all, because y'all better hit Chris up. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, and, you know, all of this stuff, you know, takes time. You know, it, you can kind of, you know, rig the system a little bit. You know, you buy socks and T-shirts and crap like that to build your points up. Or you can just buy Jordans. And if you don't want the shoe, you sell it. But, you know, the market that we're in now, I'll get into that later. But, you know, you try to accumulate as most points as you can. That way, if you do have a sneaker business, you know, you can have a better shot at, you know, basically guaranteeing yourself a pair, you know, because you don't put in the footwork, you don't spend the money to, you know, achieve this level on these, you know, apps to where you can basically guarantee yourself a pair. So, you know, if you do have a sneaker business, that's another way for you to get some inventory outside of, you know, networking with other people and, you know, trying to get plugged in like that. Wow. Okay. Oba asks, what is a sneaker bot? <laughs> all right. A sneaker bot, basically, they bypass all of the stuff that, you know, normal people like us manually have to do. So instead of typing in passwords, you know, and selecting the captures and all of that, the bots bypass all of that stuff because, you know, the people who are, who are designing these bots design them to go around that. So that's a part of that artificial technology, you know, that intelligence of, you know, bypassing, you know, man, what, whatever it takes a manual user, how much every time it takes a manual user to log in, to try to add a shoe to, to the cart and all those things, the bot does it so quick and so faster. By the time you get ready to check out and select your shoe and pay, the bot has already carted five to 10 pairs compared to your one. So that's how significant a bot is. And that's, you know, <laughs> those bots are giving, you know, retailers some hell because they haven't found a way to completely stop it yet. So, you know, the harder they try, you know, the more smart the people make the bots. So, and, you know, I kind of like the competition between the two because, you know, the little man over here is trying to take advantage of, you know, the big bank hanks, you know, hey, you know, we don't, we're tired of not hitting shoes on sneakers app. So we're going to design a bot, you know, to where we can get through all of your protection and, you know, and secure these pairs. But I also understand it on the other side, too, because everybody don't get these shoes. And it's emotionally draining to them because people really want these shoes. But you have a lot of people, resellers out here, they want the shoe to resell to make money. And, you know, they don't care about putting the shoe on feet. They, they're trying to make a dollar. So I get both sides. So a sneaker bot essentially is there to, you know, bypass everything a human has to go through and do it easier and faster. And it's, it's gotten so good now. They doing it on Target. They doing it on Walmart, Best Buy. And, you know, soon it's going to be on everything. So, yeah. What are, um, so what's your profit margin looking like? Oh, so this year I'm already at 12 grand. Uh, 12 grand. April was a rough month because. 12 grand. Oh, profit. Yeah. 12 grand in sneaker sales. Yeah. And in profit. Yes. Dang. And, you know, it could have been more. But as I told, uh, was talking to Oba AE yesterday. Nike is having a lot of supply chain issues. So a lot of the shoes are getting pushed back. Pushed back, I mean, uh, the dates are changing as to why, you know, April was such a horrible month for shoes. And they're just, they're not organized when it comes to this stuff. And I get it. But, you know, as a business, 
as a sneaker selling business, you know, it's kind of hard, um, you know, trying to project, project your sales for the year when you got stuff like that happening. And since I'm new, you know what I'm saying? A lot of this stuff is unexpected and I'm learning on the fly. So at this point, you know, with everything that's going on, I don't really have a goal this year as far as how much money I'm going to make because the market has dried up so much, just like how stocks have been crashing and other assets been going down in price. So have a lot of shoes and so have people's pockets on wanting to spend three to four hundred dollars on a shoe after it drops already and they didn't get the chance to get it. So because I got, you know, four pair of shoes right here right now that, you know, these shoes are hot. If this had been six months ago, these shoes would have been gone if I sold them. But people are, you know, inflation is making people, you know, keep money in their pockets. Let me ask you, I'm strolling through your, um, and man, wait, a, a great wealth of knowledge, I greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Brother African Emporium, for, for answering questions in the chat and posting the knowledge in the chat. Greatly appreciate it. Um, let me ask you, um, well, there's two things I want to ask. I'm going to ask them first. The, uh -huh. Okay, so post it, when you post it, your sneakers on, on Facebook, and like mm -hmm. this one is January 7, 2023. Is this the date that the sneaker is going to come out? And so they would prepay at, um, at the $200 amount now and get it in January? How does that work? No, so that's, that is what Nike projected projects as the release date barring any you know supply chain issues so okay. the actual release date of the shoe and that is the retail price for the shoe if you wanted this shoe from me you would not pay two hundred dollars you would pay the market price what the shoe is actually going for right now even though it's technically not out and i wouldn't even take your order because the shoe is so far away from dropping you know you would, I would, you would have to have ultimate trust in me for you to pay me. And to be honest, at this point, I would not take your money because too many shoes are being pushed back. Dates are changing. It's just not a guarantee that, you know, this shoe is going to come out on its date. It's just a projected date that it's supposed okay. to come out. So when you post the sneakers on the site, these are just pretty much enticing, letting people know. Okay, so this one, November the 5th. So this Was is saying, it? hey, this is the sneaker that's going to come out November it's the just, 5th. Yeah, it's just giving you like, yeah, it's just giving you like a first look at how the shoe is going to look. Mm -hmm. um, basically the mock-up version of it. And this is kind of what you will see when a, sh when a shoe actually comes out. Now, it could change uh, depending on how far the date is away from where we are now. Now, this shoe in particular, the Fire Red Jordan 9, uh, this is no November. This is going into July, August, September, October. So that's four months away. It still could change. But, you know, this is more of a sure shot than something that's in 2023. Because like I said, with everything that's going on, COVID basically has made the Nike business and model um, unstable and chaotic to where you cannot predict, you know, where, you know, if this shoe is going to drop this day or not, because they literally just moved three or four shoes back in date just within the last two weeks. So there's no guarantee that, you know, that's going to be the date for, for the future. It's just where it is now. The business is, is all over the place right now. So these are basically just, you know, to get your eyes to see what the shoe will possibly look like, you know, to basically captivate you. Here's the idea of what the shoe is going to look like, you know, barring no changes or anything like that. This is what you have to look forward to. And it also gives you a price. So. Nike has been raising prices on certain shoes. A shoe that dropped last year is not the same price as a shoe that drops this year, barring inflation. So, right. yeah, and Anybody this is, uh, okay. No, no, I'm not, yeah, and this is just, you know, it's like a sneaker calendar. 
you know, to let you know, this shoe drops this date. So if you want this shoe, just be on the lookout, you know, and, you know, be ready. And, you know, there are pairs out here because, you know, I know some people that are connected to Nike itself. So they do get these, you know, early mock-up and views of these shoes because it's the, the sneaker community is kind of locked together. This is why, you know, I try to plug myself in with different people and I try to add to what's already there coming from the economic side. I think that's where I'm different than most people or most sneaker heads, I would say, YouTubers and all of that. I think I want, I, I've never been really into sneakers, um, mm -hmm. but Understandable. I have purchased a few lately. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I, I have, um, I don't have any Jordans. <laughs> Last for me. Uh, I'm, just I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> it's a perfect time, Chris. It's right. Time. Get up, get up. <laughs> but I do plan. To, I do plan to support um, Chris' business in the future, um, because I was like, I think I might try to wear some of this. But I've never been. I don't know. I, I don't know. I just never purchased any. I'm probably cheap. That's probably what it is. Yeah. But <laughs> but I've never <laughs> never purchased. But you know, the more I look at them on Chris's page, I'm like, oh, they're kind of cute. I mean, if I can own a pair. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, I mean, okay. as you're scrolling right now, as you can see, you know, some of the pictures, you know, where, you know, you got the Foot Locker confirming your res reservations. Yeah. You got the JD Sports and Finish Line, you know, you know, basically saying confirm your pair. And, you know, it just tells you what shoe it is, the price, and when you got to pick it up. Now, let me ask. Okay, so let me switch this up a little bit. Okay. Because you got a nice little profit margin going. And I have some people that, that kind of don't know how to make a profit. So I'm really proud of you in that aspect um, on mm -hmm. making a profit. Markup, how important is it for you to have a markup? And do you include, because you have to ship these, right? Or when you order, you have mm -hmm. the person's address to ship to. So mm -hmm. you have the price of the sneaker. You have... Mm -hmm. Your shipping, you have taxes, and mm -hmm. you have company markup, right? And I'm sure in your company markup, you pay yourself. Am I absolutely? Absolutely. So, with that, um, so for instance, let's take the shoe, uh, the Jordan 12 playoff. That was a $200 10 shoe, $210 shoe at retail price. I had a customer. You know, he bought shoes from me before um, and he's in city. So he's local, but he still requires me to ship the shoes. He don't want to meet up. That's fine. So he paid two seventy five for the shoe. And it cost me thirteen dollars to ship it. Even though, you know, it's in city, I think it's still kind of expensive, but whatever. So I profited, you know, minus. You know, the shipping fee, that's what, you know, 65 minus 13. So that's what? $52. So I profit $52 off of that. Wait, running back again? So you, you paid? No. Yeah, so I paid 210 for the shoe retail. 210, uh-huh. And I sold them to him for two seventy five. Oh, that's not bad. Uh huh. And shipping was thirteen dollars. So I take that back. I profited sixty two bucks. Right, because when you add now, now here's the important thing with my business. Me paying myself, I that money goes Back somewhere, in. somewhere in some stock. It it doesn't even matter, you know. My I'm not paying myself, so to speak. 
My money is going to, you know, my future. I don't care about the money right now. I don't need it. You know, I can make it up any other place. If I need the money, I know what to do to get it. Now, this is where, you know, the trading comes in. You know, that $62 can go on a Tesla call or, you know, Apple or whatever. I have ultimate say on what, you know, I pay myself. Because to me, I'm paying myself by buying stock or whatever. Right. I don't necessarily have, necessarily have to put that into my bank account and spend it. That's where right. I got my, you know, my little, my other little gigs and whatever I do. So are you saying that your profits are in your investment account, which is uh, being that they're in, you put it in your investments account, then mm. they're, they're untaxed right now. Correct. Smart move. So, you know, that's $62. Uh, that's $62 you know, is untaxed and it basically just transferred from him to me to my investment account to Nike, Apple, Tesla, or whatever the case. Or even ask, gold or silver. So let me ask you how how about approximately or just a guess or just a estimated amount of sneakers you sold in 2021 in 2022 thus far. So if you had to do, you probably haven't thought about this, but if you had to think about it and you had to do a quarterly analysis, your first quarter, 2020, 20, no, your fourth quarter, or just any quarter, um, what in the world? We got another earthquake? Oh boy. The whole house shaking y'all. Oh my God. Yeah, this like the third one. Ah, uh, dog, climate change. Shoot. That's this crazy. Is the, this is the third earthquake in Carolina. You better be in safe. My whole house shook. <laughs> That's wild. The table. Huh? Better get underneath the table. It's, hitting, it's probably hitting about an hour and some change away. Oh, okay. Right. It's, hitting, it's hitting on um, Elgin's side. On um, Lugolf Elgin side, yeah, had a house in Lugolf. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in the, yeah. Um, that's crazy. South, that's... south of Columbia, down there, going out. Well, it, north of Columbia, excuse me, going up. Uh, yep. I what up, I said. Twenty. Mm. Three point a uh, three. Go ahead, go ahead. E. I'm sorry. No, I was just kind of adding to that. It's weird too because uh, we just think about. Uh, I know we kind of off talk with that. Just to happen sporadic with your situation, oh. but those yeah. fault lines, you know, <laughs> like over Christmas saying, with all this, you know, it's kind of warming and all, you know, whatever, you know, it's it's, it's getting weird out there. Places even like South Carolina, and you think about it geologically, uh, how many fault lines actually run close to South Carolina region, right? If not, you're getting that reverberation where it's starting to, you know, happen out parts of Atlantic up into the low country, right? Yeah. Uh, along with having to deal with the hurricanes that are bad along that eastern quarter down there, you know, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida. Now you got to possibly even deal with hurt, uh, excuse me, earthquakes now, which is crazy, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, sidebar, of course, but, you know, of course, the topic of the day, long as, long as Sister Monica say, right, that's all that matters. But definitely um, interesting when you think about that, you know, uh, uh, from a climate perspective, right? Maybe we get the science guys in here. Right, get yeah. brother Unc them in here to kind of get them books dust off and find out primary source of what them fault yeah. lines may look like. <laughs> right. Wow, this is, this has been a, the largest in um, hey, in in nine years or whatever it has been. Oh my god, that's crazy! I didn't even know they had earthquakes in South Carolina. Yeah, we've had one. We had one um a couple of days ago. Here we go with another one. Oh, that's wild. That's and the, wild. And the wee hours of the morning, this one just happened during the day. So, my bad, Chris. <laughs> you good? You good? Yeah, the whole, I was tripping because the whole house started shaking. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> We're, it kind of redefines the idea of what we think about low country, right? Low country is supposed to be basically, you know, we're talking about, you know, 
at point of near sea level, right? You know, when you think about like above sea level, sea level, this set stretch, like like up until Denver Mile High, right? When it's like a mile, you know, up, you know, in terms of from a geological perspective, right, where the air is then, you know, in terms of those scenarios being affected for us, this area, it's very again, it's just odd to think about that, right? An earthquake in the low country already at sea level, when you have to deal with, you know. The ideal of flooding, et cetera, et cetera, if that ever became a scenario where you look at, you know, uh, like the uh, Euro Pacific area, or I should say the pair, uh, the Polynesian islands, right? They suffer a lot of what the uh, tsunamis, right? Mm -hmm. It's because they're at sea level, of course, right? So if they have any abnormal fault line value, where they get an earthquake, it instantly what uprises the sea and it floods out their entire cities, right? So it's weird to think about that because we don't want that to happen. Wusa, Wusa, right? But yeah. That could be, you know, just thinking about that, like what, if we get to that level, that'll be odd to think now, now that South Carolina, North Carolina, Florida, Georgia could deal with possibility of something like a tsunami, if you will, right? Uh, odd to think, but hey, we don't know. There's some weird stuff out there. So uh, yeah. we won't put on our 10 for a koofy hat because we don't want Sean them coming for us. Uh, <laughs> right, but that that uh that 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 heart, you know, heart program might be just be working pretty nice down there with all the military. Right. <laughs> yeah. So back to our regular scheduled program. <laughs> yeah, Chris, that was my last question. I was wondering, you know, how you know the if you kind of had an idea of the in you know, your uh, numbers inventory wise. What did you? Move? Obviously, you did move more in twenty twenty one because, of course, it'd be a, a full year, mm -hmm. but. Given last year and this year where we are now, um, and I think you said it earlier, we talked talked about a little bit about estimated profits on where you are uh, mm -hmm. due to what's going on in the world because of the po people's pockets. But you know, I was interested in people always find a, find a way to spend some money. Yeah, if they. I mean, they do. But now, you know, seeing it in real time, mm -hmm. you know. People are really penny pinching, and also Nike is doing something very clever. They are dropping these shoes, certain shoes, more and more, and they kind of like drowning out the resale market. Because basically, a lot of the shoes that you know were going for four or five hundred dollars, like last year and twenty twenty, they're actually down in price to like the you know, middle to high 300s. So, you know, the, the reseller market is drying up, but also if you have customers, you know, you actually could lock in, but I I would guarantee the, the, four, the four pair of shoes that I have right here beside me, those shoes would have been gone six months ago. I'm going to stop sharing. You want to the screen to show your sneaker? Yeah, I can share my screen. No doubt. These shoes are gone six months ago. Let's see. Okay. Start broadcast. Okay. Uh, Y'all see? Um. Uh, yeah, it's coming. Uh oh. What'd you do? Oh, I we. It just I say and the screen. I think you gotta move from that. Move from the Zoom. Now you. Oh, there we go. All right. Now, yep. What are you? What are you saying? Your screen, your home screen with your apps. So how do I share like? Oh, your camera. You yeah, I was about to say use your camera. Yeah, okay, take it off okay. of your screen and just use your camera. There you go. Okay, yeah. So like this dude right here. Like this dude right here is going, you know, for close to $500, right? Mm. Nice shoe came out last year, white Oreo. 
Now, if I had sold this shoe six months ago, it's gone. Now, you know, people ask for discounts. You know, can you sell it to me lower? <laughs> and all this Ooh. other stuff. Okay. Uh, this is the Jordan 4 Red Thunder. This came out in January, right? If Brandon is a Chicago Bull fan, he knows these colors very well. <laughs> all day. <laughs> and those are five hundred dollars. Now these are about three, three forty is three fifty, close to four hundred dollars. And these are the Jordan Four Lightnings. And these are about a three fifty, three hundred fifty dollars shoe. What size are those? 12. Now, me personally, I can keep these, right? But I like more, I like money and stocks more than shoes. So these are the Jordan 4 um, military black. And these are, you know, about a $350, $400 shoe as well. But you know, I like money and stocks more than, you know, other assets, more than shoes. They look nice, but I would sell them in a heartbeat, which is what I'm trying to do now. Because, you know, this is my first, you know, so-called recession to where I can capitalize on it. So, you know, I don't need these shoes. This bad boy hit near Lexington. Oh, go ahead, Chris. I'm sorry. Are you good? I thought you that's wild over there right now. But um, yeah, I don't need these shoes. You know, I'd rather have the money patiently waiting, stealthing like a line. And when it's time to buy up, I get rich. That's how I think. So hey Chris, I got a question for you. Do you do any, do you do any type of promotions? With your shoes, or are you doing like any collective sales or anything like that? I'm glad you asked because I actually, um, I actually, a guy asked me, could he like buy all four pairs, you know, for a certain price? And I told him, yeah. Okay. So basically, I'm taking like $50 off of each shoe. So, like, these four pairs together is like $1,400. 14 $1,500. 14 or 1500 dollars And I told him, listen, if you give me $1,375, you can have them. Have all four of them. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's a lot of money to drop on four pairs. So, you know, you really gotta gauge people because, like right now, like I said, everybody penny pinching and they don't really want to pay, you know, what these are worth. So if they don't want to pay, I'm okay. I'll hold on to them. That's fine. I'll wait till, you know, everything blows over and then you're going to come back and be like, hey, I need these, man. Because these shoes are not dropping anymore. That's the thing. Mm. So when it comes down to a consumer, do you really want this shoe? Can you really live without it? That's how you know if you're going to spend or not. I don't care about these shoes like that. You know, I don't care about wearing them. I will, but I don't care to. That's why I say I'm really a sneaker collector and investor more than I am a consumer. I will buy this shoe, hold on to it, and then sell it. That's a profit for me and my investing prowess. But am I buying the shoe? Be like, oh, yeah, I got me another pair. You know, I'm going to put these, put these on feet and go do whatever I do. No, I don't care about that. I really don't. It's, to be honest, it's really like three or four pairs of shoes that I have not worn that I really do like, that I that I am keeping because I like the shoe. The rest of them, they can go. No doubt. So yeah, I do buy shoes to sell them. And then I do buy shoes that I do like. Because, you know, I like what I like. And if I can afford it, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy it. But you know. Do I need it? Nah. You know, I can sell these. You know what I'm saying? 
And like I said, this is the prime opportunity to try to sell it. Now, I wish I kind of sold it before because I'm like learning all of this stuff is new to me. I'm like learning on, on the run, basically. Let me ask you. Hmm? Let me ask you. You say you're learning <clears throat> on the run. Do you, do you document like these time frames of, you know, what's going on and what's making a difference in your business? Absolutely. Uh, like I said, April was the work month, worst month I ever had selling the shoe because, like I said, Nike was so bad with their dates and the shoes that they dropped is like they purposely didn't want resellers to make money because there was April was trash for Jordan shoes, ultimately trash. Now, Man, I think the market was trash, period, for all shoes, because there was nothing really that was out there to sell that dropped. So, you know, looking at this, this is why I'm different than other sneakerheads. I made a video about this. I look at the macro and the micro economy. Other sneakerheads don't know what I know about this stuff like that. I know when, you know, people, like I said, they penny pinch it now and how Nike, you know, dropping the same shoes, dropping, you know, millions of the same pairs, like watering down the shoe, making it go below retail to where a reseller can't make no money. You know, I pay attention to stuff like that. Other people, you know, they probably see it, but they don't know, you know, I know how you know, Nike business model was just being affected by, you know, COVID and the recession and inflation and all this other stuff. You know, people can say that inflation where everybody been saying inflation, 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 but they don't know what, they don't understand what inflation means. It's not just, you know, prices just going up. It's a lot more to that. You know, this country, you know, makes all the goods and serve, uh, makes all the goods. Then you got to pay for those goods. Then your factories getting affected, those workers getting affected. Then you got to get them over here to the states. Then you got to pay them them prices that they put on transportation fees. Then you got to get them over here. You got to pay the retailers that you shipping the shoes to. All of that stuff. You got to break that stuff down. Those numbers matter. And Nike, as we seen yesterday when Nike had earnings, you know, Asia was trash again. And Europe basically saved them so to speak, but going forward, their guidance, we can expect more, more worse stuff to come. Inflation ain't going nowhere and a recession is right around the corner if we're not already in it. Negative GDP today. Matter of fact, if we're talking about economics. Good segue. <laughs> Go ahead, A.E. <laughs> well, you know, I like to have stuff queued up with you. <laughs> <laughs> I want to keep the flow going because this is a, you know, for us, as for me personally, uh, this hits home, right? Because again, y'all may or may not know your brother actually had a retail business when I was in college. And uh, weirdly so, it was named Ponies Footwear and Clothing. So I come from a background where clothing, shoes, the whole nine within that uh, was a forte that I, I enjoyed uh, as being a funnel or a facilitator to that of what my community, because of course we love those kind of products on average, right? Uh, as opposed to, I think one of the uh, the members in the chat asked a question, um, you know, uh, I think it was our brother Kofi Brown, he asked a question where well, he made a statement, said Dr. Dr. Amison Wilson told us to invest in our own business, right? And, and you know, within that perspective, when we say invest in our own business, well, we realize that the global markets, of course, are not necessarily, you know, masked in just a black, you know, manufacturing, you know, uh, producer, distributor, whatever, et cetera, right? So we have, you know, brand values that we like that are not necessarily 100% produced by us from, you know, from the ground up. However, we can be that middleman or that middleman facilitator value or funnel to help, you know, uh, direct a lot of our consumer base, of course, on a cultural side, to our businesses, right? Uh, in this case, you know, over Chris uh, being a shoe collector, shoe aficionado in that regard, he's most well equipped to give that, you know, quote unquote, cultural shopper 
a better experience, not just from the value, possibly them getting an exclusive, you know, in, you know, in use of the shoe or the sneaker that they're buying, but the education that comes along with it. Right. Uh, and that's what's vital because again, like he spoke to that, the missing piece for most black businesses, if you be honest, if we want to be honest about it, you know, where, you know, we kind of get it swiped that when they say our customer service is not necessarily the best, right? Y'all heard that before. It's not a secret. A lot of black businesses do suffer a little bit in that perspective, right? We don't understand the connection between good customer service, good education of business product value, how that translates into what? A revolving customer, right? Or a now a new funnel uh, 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 client now that goes out and uses that word of mouth, you know, experience to what? Attract other people to come back and shop. You see what I'm saying? So in that regard, um, I think there's a lot to take from this beyond the fact that course he has you know exorbitantly great inventory like seriously crazy crazy great inventory it's the education that makes this larger than life right as we are speaking here on the urban economic empowerment show about financial literacy you're seeing you know beginning mid-stage end result right and the the level of uh information or the education that's you know baked into the process in itself that's what we're trying to really delineate here right? Because it doesn't take a whole lot to, it's, you know, if you will, start a business if you have the right, you know, model uh, in place to help you get, you know, from ground to, you know, uh, you know, to go mode, so to speak, right? Utilizing the ability to level up, leverage up, and take advantage of boom and bust cycles and markets. Of course, on the retail side of things, where we're talking about exclusivity type of items, when you think about a company like a Coach or a Gucci or a Hermes or a Louis Vuitton, right? They have a special type of client, right? You don't go to them, you know, with your pockets out of way, right? The same way you don't pull up at a Bugatti dealership, you know, <laughs> worried about how much the price of gas is going to cost to fill it up, right? It's the same that comes on, along with a marketplace that's already set in place by a track record of what, you know, having a certain type of clientele that knows what they're getting and what they're, you know, having to come with to spin, right? So I just want to touch on a couple of things in, in relation to what you was doing, Sister Monica, and what Sister, you know, excuse me, uh, Oba Chris was speaking about uh, in relation to that of, you know, being able to facilitate that level of, uh, you know, uh, if you would say a niche market, but it really isn't because now we know that the, uh, the sneaker collector game has now morphed into something much more great and larger than it used to be from a, a rarity, like a Mitchell and Ness back in the days with a throwback jersey, right? It's much more bigger than that now because it's a whole new other industry in itself. And a lot of people, again, when they, when they speak to this stuff or they, you know, uh, are trying to get people to see the extent of how, how it's such a, it is such a collector's market at this point. And that goes with the value of some of the markups that come along with these sneakers. It's not like you just go on the Foot Locker and you're just going to get some off the shelf and like, okay, yeah, yeah, you got luck, you got your size. But ultimately, you know, when that shoe goes out of season, whatever, you kind of, you know, stuck waiting for the next time to come around or you have to go to other markets to find that, right? So collectors know that, right? And they know that there's always a moment when a person who may have not been able to get their size because of whatever reason, we spoke about the whole idea of what the shoebox, right? How, how that happens, right? Over Chris broke that down, right? I post something in the chat concerning that, how that also can alleviate a person from being able to what? Get the shoe that they want because time, right? Time is money. We speak about that a lot as an investors, right? Uh, that you have to be what, you know, you, as we say, stay ready so you don't have to worry about doing what? Getting ready, right? That has to hap, you know, happens to be a main value when it comes to retail side of things as well. Collectible markets as well. You have to be ready, right? Your money and everything has to be in play. Uh, but within that, of course, like I said, I want to definitely speak to the education side of this because I think that's very important because what Chris is really giving you guys, you know, for a lot of people who understand or who may not understand or who may have an idea of what he's saying, he's giving you a lot of on the ground intel on how you can start your own business too. And it may not just be sneakers. It could be, you know, candles, t-shirts, whatever, trinkets. However, Sister Monica office has done a great job over the years showing you exactly how to put together such a business model, right? Or how to at least level it up. You know, when you go through the levels of getting your LLC and, utilizing you know the value of being able to capture grants if that if you will to just do just that right so one thing definitely um i want to touch to or speak to the ideal of um if i could here 
Um, it's the value of, of a funnel, right? What is a marketing funnel? Because over Chris, definitely, if you follow him, you'll know that he he himself has been able to build his own funnel value outside of an outside agency. That's great in itself because he's utilizing what these social media platforms, right? To in itself allow them to you know to use their agos to also help populate what interest in this you know in sneakers and shoes as well by way of people being able to kind of you know you know uh you know see his stuff pop up maybe in some one of their feed values at some point right and so that's important as well because if you think about business values how well is your funnel you know funnel value that goes a lot into again how well you are able to present your item in front of a lot of people right and so there's a lot of different values when you think about this stuff right so you think about you know uh, you know, awareness, consideration, conversion, value, loyalty, and advocacy. So he wants a revolving door of business. So of course, when you go down his list, value in this, when you think about awareness, well, you know the extent of his awareness campaign, right? Because again, he utilizes a lot of those social media values, right? The consideration aspect is based upon a lot of that, what? What's going on in around the market itself, right? Boom, bust cycles, right? Are we in a low demand or high demand cycle right now, right? Are we, in this case, we're dealing with inflation. So he's weary of that. So he knows how to price what he have now within this inventory in a way where he still can capture profit or he has the ability to, uh, to sit on that inventory based upon the what the condition of the market. And then he'll know that at some point when we kind of get through a lot of that penny pitching, you know, he's ready and poised to be able to what make that level of what conversion come into practice because he has the inventory, right? He, he's ready to go, right? And then fourthly, we talk about the value of what? Loyalty, right? That. That's the idea when I spoke about when you have that word of mouth client, right? These people who are the, that are in this space, they know what they want, right? They already know they're coming to get something in their in their value that is exclusive, right? Um, and it's a seasonal scenario, so to speak, right? You have to be on that cyclical train to be able to capture those shoes when they come out. If you miss out, you just you're out unless you can find again some other portal to be able to facilitate that what that uh that buy. So building a loyalty brand comes with having a good experience when you shop with Croft Services and you buy a sneaker from him. What he gives you from the top level of his, you know, funnel value with the awareness, consideration, conversion value, that builds your loyalty, right? Because you're getting educated, you're getting, you know, you're getting a shoe that you know that's, you know, what it is, you know, everything going to be legit, you know, from top to bottom, not just the shoe, but we talk about the experience, right? Because he is a person that's, you know, knowledgeable of his what? of his environment, right? His, his, you know, consumer environment. And then, like I say, lastly, the advocacy aspect to that, to me, is also like larger than life in itself. Why? Because that, again, provides that level of, you know, uh, respect to the marketplace as a whole, as the sneaker collectors, you know, game has now morphed into a, a massive, massive industry here. We're going to look at a couple of those numbers, let people know it's not no fluke, right? He's 100% right in his act. When he's speaking to the idea that it's more than just, you know, people standing in the long line out in frigid weather in Chicago in the middle of winter to buy some joys, right? Like those days, if you're still doing that, or those people on the lower lower tier bottom, right? Again, no swipe at them, but they're doing it all wrong, right? And they could be just trying to get it basically as close as they could at the most MSRP value as well. I mean, nothing wrong with that as well. But that's the struggle value of the sneaker game, right? I'm thinking, pretty sure he'll be able to speak to that. All right, when you go into that a little bit, possibly, but there's other ways you can be able to get those sneakers in, in, in a way where you know it separates you from having to go through all that. You may have to spend a little extra, but it's the same when people do white glove services when they go to move their items as opposed to just you know two men in the truck, right? Yeah, good luck if you're trying to keep your friends from getting all broke up or whatever, right? <laughs> and you don't have insurance, so that's the experience as well that comes along with the consideration aspect within that funnel, too, right? So that's important. So if you run any kind of business, you want to keep that in mind, right? Uh, whether you use an outside funnel service or you want to be able to build the level of funnel service on your own or, you know, from a homogenous perspective or organically, these are some things you have to take into what? Into consideration, right? Because customer service is literally, you know, what helps you have retention in your business model, right? You want people to come back. You don't, they don't want to deal with an unruly person, person who really don't know what's going on, and all that silliness that most people, black people show up with business and they think that just because they got an item, that's enough. And they wonder why their sales are suffering because again, they don't understand, you know, how to work, right? Their market audience, right? You know, by using good funnel you know, techniques and so forth or strategies, if you will, 
right? So that's just something y'all want to add to the, the value net because again, this is the value of what? Urban economic empowerment is to get people to understand that he's telling you in a lot of ways just how you can also duplicate such a business model, right? That's, see, that's that, you know, what they call the silver lining. This is how you do that based upon a lot of the other stuff he's doing, right? And then again, just kind of using some of that stuff to kind of map or map roadmap out exactly what we mean by that, right? The, the values of advocacy, advocacy, loyalty value, uh, awareness value, how he utilizes his business play, pages, right? And the majority of the stuff that's on there is dealing with what? Things that he's what? You know, obviously what? Uh, influenced by, right? The things that he's excited about. So you know you're dealing with a person who's literally what? Dress right, dress about business, right? As you see on his Instagram page, right? Uh, top tier entrepreneur out to get, you know, who you're dealing with a person who's serious about asset ownership because he tells you exactly who he is, what he's about. So, you know, you go to do business with this guy, you know, you're getting a person that's what about that life, right? He's straightforward. It's not, you know, I'm an investor, day trader analyst. And then you come down here and start looking at a lot of the pictures, you start seeing what a lot of off the wall beat stuff, right? <laughs> it go everything except from what he's speaking about be, you know, something totally different than that. Right. So that tells you again, a lot about what, you know, where his interests are, right? Uh, and that's a level of, again, awareness lets you know you're dealing with a what, you know, a, a, a real uh, businessman in that perspective, right? Uh, and that's important, again, just being able to kind of, you know, uh, share that value, right? And so second to that, again, just talking to the idea of, um, you know, the level of the complexity of this being a new multi-billion dollar industry, right? Not hard to kind of realize at this point, right? We're talking about multi-billion dollar industry. And it's just somewhat getting started, which is weird when you think about it, because you would say, man, people have been selling sneakers for so long, right? Foot Locker been selling. But the, the collector side of this stuff is just really beginning to what take off because truth be told, it didn't really catch that level of, in my opinion, momentum, let's say on the back end of maybe 2018, 2019, into 2020, especially with people sitting home during COVID, they began to do a lot of what? Online searching for certain things, right? They got them stimmy check, but they were looking for them exclusive shoes, right? Young were not buying ramen noodles, they were buying joys, right? Especially for a lot of the young folk, right? They were buying iPhones and joys. Well, how do we know that? Because we were able to track that data by the value, what? Consumer values, right? Checking the BLS websites, checking these different consumer portals that shows you exactly what a lot of people are spending their money on when they got these stimulus checks. Everything except bills, for the most part, they were consuming items, right? And sneakers was one of those things that popped up as a big ticket item that a lot of people were buying with their what? Their stimulus checks. Let's go figure, Right? So a lot of the sneakerheads really began to what ramp up their exposure to get their shoes out in front of a lot of people, right? And from there, a lot of that, you know, the boutique uh, business owners like myself, I had a boutique business, whatever. The exclusive value of the shoes that were offered now demanded what a bigger price because they were what hard to get the exclusivity of them. That in itself is a whole nother different ball game. Now you're talking about shoes now that are worth, you know, again, $10,000 a pair. Like the average person, like my infant to pay that, well, but guess what? There's a shop right there who will, right? Uh, and that in itself is, you know, uh, great because you're thinking about it. If you're able to demand or control inventory and it's not to the point where it's kind of messing up any other investments and things like that, you know, that means you're what? You're in a position of what? That at some point you can command price value or uh, we like to say what? You can what? Uh, get better margin on your sneakers by being what patient in a marketplace that's obviously still what growing and budding, despite we may be in inflationary times or somewhat of a, what, a small a small decline in terms of our boom bust cycle, it's, it's going to come back around again, and those same sneakers going to be what right there ready to what you know to be offered up for the uh, you know for consumers, right? So that's very important. So again, just let you know you know as they say, it's no you know no stopping the ideal of this business model that is really rapidly what increasing as we you know, kind of look out there in the landscape over Chris being, you know, within our base, if you will, right. Uh, as a black business owner, well, how great is that? Why spend that time, you know, fighting Foot Locker, Hibbit, wherever, or some of the online portals when you got a brother right in his act that, you know, within a lot of you, you, girl, you guys in circle and can give you that kind of what white glove experience from education to the value of you with a great product. Right. So that's the importance of that. When you say, you know, we want to buy black or shop black, whatever. Right. There you go. Right. It shouldn't be. It should be non-negotiable when you think about that. Right. I'll be buying my pair. You know, I haven't bought Joe's in a long, 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 long time. Right. But when I go to buy a pair, you guess who I'm going to, You definitely know I'm going to Oprah Chris. Right. It's not even up for debate. 
right? So let's just keep that in mind when we talk about really shopping black, right? And second to that, again, one, uh, third to that, excuse me, I want to just, again, keep kind of harping on the value of that. The demand for rare examples of our country sneakers is pushing prices sky high. You know, just by him being in the game early, that sets him up for a level of success in that regard too. Because again, we're talking about being able to build uh, a war chest the same way a person like a Warren Buffett would have an exclusive what portfolio when it comes to real estate, right? The Berkshire Hathaway portfolio is deeper than just real estate. Of course, there's other stuff as well, business product. But their real estate portfolio is what is great because they're handpicking certain select homes, this, that, and the third. So, you know, you're getting a level of quality within that. Well, the sneaker game is the same way, right? Because there are only so many, right? It's kind of like exotic cars a lot in a lot of ways, right? So if you have even some of the old ones that were maybe, uh, you know, coming off the value of some kind of pro athlete, whatever, if you're able to kind of command an opportunity to catch them at an auction, the resale to those things could be what? Crazy, right? Taking that example, the 1985 pre-production sample of the Nike's first shoe of the former NBA basketball player, Michael Jordan, it sold at $560,000 in what year? 2020. During the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> Who in the world buying a pair of Jordans in the middle of a pandemic? $560,000, half a million dollars. Well, somebody was that was sitting at home that was in quarantine, surfing the internet all day. They had nothing to do because they couldn't really go outside and had some money somewhere sitting around. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. That increased that opportunity just that much. And it only takes for that person to buy them shoes. Now post them shoes potentially on what? Their social media somewhere and say, yeah, I got these exclusive so-and-so, so-and-so shoes. You know, now you get that what? That Jones effect. Man, I want to, you know, maybe I can find me something out there like that. Right? Again, y'all get it from that perspective, right? But that's what's interesting about this because, again, it's already what? Self-advertised. It's already marketed just by way of the what? The environment that it produces in itself. Air Yeezy is one prototype worn by Kanye West on stage in 2008, $1.8 million. Let that marinate for a moment, right? Couldn't make hey. this stuff up. Right, one point eight million dollars for a pair of shoes. Now you know the old folk black brother. I bet it better have a toilet with it, a gas pedal. It better have a self uh, cooking stove that <laughs> cook pot roast with it. If I'm gonna pay one point eight million dollars, but you guys understand the people who are able to purchase these items, they're not complaining about the gas to go in the Bugatti once they buy the Bugatti. We clearly know there's a market that's made for that type of what consumer. So again, he's being able to phone those clients into his what his ecosystem be uh be that facilitator for them as we all should now to look to what to over chris when it comes to that level of what sneaker value uh if we have our own value you know that we want to get out of that you should definitely think twice not think twice about going to him to, uh, to get what you need if nothing else even the education right because he's an open door from that regard right so that's important so again you just look at some of these guys that you know they got the little sneaker connect uh, collections whatever I mean, it's just crazy Right. It, 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 you know, in a good way, because we're talking about business. Right. We talk about resale. We're talking about being able to what to be that what that middleman or somewhat to never in that regard. Right. So some of the most expensive shoes ever sold right there. Five hundred six thousand on the left. One point eight million dollars here on the right with Kanye. Right. Right. It just it's 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 like it's awesome. Right. When you think about it. Right. But classic values of being able to what to be a part of the supply demand what you know, cycle as a business owner. Right. And so when we talk about the extent of what, you know, some of these sneakers can go for, and I'm pretty sure at some point, Oprah Chris may be planning for just to get him ha- get his hands on one of them, one of them tight like that, if not, you know, two, three of them tights, right? Because, you know, it's all working up towards to something great at some point. You know, of course, that's his decision. But just think about that, right? Because he has a pipeline that he's building now where he'll be to kind of facilitate, facilitate himself into certain arenas that may offer him up the opportunity to be able to get such you know levels of sneakers that that demand that level of um uh price value i mean look at these right here sale of new nike louis vuitton shoes exceeded how much 25 million dollars and a part of that price is because the guy that made um well as you can see the air that's on the side of it in quotations mm-hmm. that that's a name that's a brand behind a black man, black man named um, Virgil Abloh. He died last year and he created the brand Off-White because he worked for Louis Vuitton. Yep. And anything with 
his name on it, basically that off-white brand. I got two pairs of off-white shoes. Those shoes are going to be worth so much in the future. Just by sitting on them, right? In itself, because we're talking about aggregate value of appreciation, given the, fit, the level of their what, exclusivity, right? I mean, you can't think about it that way. It's like, man, that is rather unique in itself, right? Uh, but just being a person who's in the no space, that's what garners you that level of what opportunity in itself as a collector who also, you know, deals in the value of resale. As the, as the saying goes, everything uh, comes with a price, right? Everything has a price attached to it, right? Well, I'm buying these, they ain't gonna never sell them. I'm never gonna sell them, but guess what? It, yeah, they could be sold, <laughs> right? It, they could be sold, right? If the price is right, they'll definitely be sold, right? So again, we're talking about a massive level of opportunity here. If you're thinking to yourself, if someone willing to pay $25 million for a pair of sneakers, and the FOMO that comes along with somebody else who said, man, if I even had that kind of money, would I spend that kind of money on these shoes? If I'm a sneaker person, chances are they're going to be what? Somebody out there is going to say what? Yep. See how that works? <laughs> that's, just, that's just a part of business. That's a part of resale. That's a part of, you know, the idea of you know, wanting to have something that others may or may not can what? Uh, get their hands on. It's a, it's a level of FOMO, fear of missing out, right? I used to use that tactic very well in my business when I was you know, running my little business when I was you know, going to school. And it worked really well. I used to just, you know, we used to have, of course, our little football games on Saturday. I had got so good with the city, uh, you know, and a lot of the businesses at that time, right, uh, within Statesboro. I mean, I used to do sneaker sales and clothing sales at literally, in this case, if you're familiar with Georgia Southern, it's a gas station that's across, right across the street from the stadium. That's very public. Everybody knows that gas station called Parkers, right? I used to set up right there. I was the only one they ever allowed to be able to set up a pop-up business to sell retail clothes items right across from that Georgia Southern Stadium when it was packed, right? And that was during the time when Adrian Peterson uh, was uh, the running back for there. Not, you know, there's two types of Adrian Peterson. Y'all, I'm sure y'all know what I'm talking about, but AP that played for, you know, running back at Georgia Southern. But nonetheless, that's my story with that. But it's great because, again, you're talking about exposure. You're talking about the opportunity. It's just great. Now, just to show y'all that this stuff is, you know, legit to the umpteenth degree, they are <laughs> papers or citations or that of doctors or that's that of, uh, or some kind of form of a what, uh, uh, you know, uh, bodies of, of, of work that are speaking to the ideal of how important the sneaker resale business market has now took off at exorbitant levels. As you see here in, you know, this paper here by Roger Wu. Now, I don't know if this is a dissertation or not, but of course, the advisor to his papers was Professor Eric Arbach, right? So this may be may have been his what his dissertation. Who knows, right? I haven't went deep deep into. I read just a little bit overview, but as you see, the right the right price for a collective of sneakers, a predictive analysis on what sneaker resale market. So this is next level. Northwestern University put together this what you know you know this 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 abstract value or this paper value. But when you speak uh, read through his abstract, you see exactly you know, what we're talking about here today, the market of collectible sneakers have grown dramatically within the what digitalization of what American society sneakers that are designed by world famous celebrities and limited in quantity are highly sought after by what fervent collectors does have become investment opportunities that right there investment, what opportunities for many individuals, the paper examines sneakers resale market based the data on what StockX, one of the biggest sneaker reselling platforms, literally, as we know today, they're growing. There's others as well, which I will show you, uh, mm -hmm. aims to identify models that predict the what? Rational reselling prices uh, from what? Collectible sneakers from an investor's what? Perspective. What is over, Chris? <laughs> He's an investor of, of all things, right? Don't get it twisted. He is an investor above all things who's happy to love sneakers who happens to be a facilitator of those, what, rarities, those collectibles. As you heard him say, he could easily just keep them and wear them, but he sees the value of being able to turn that into what, a big investment, right? Turning over those, what, those items to kind of keep his wealth, you know, creation uh, model, what, in play or in practice, right? So very important here when you think about that, guys, to let you know, this ain't no fly by night, this ain't no fluke stuff, this is the real deal, holy field, right? There are people who are writing papers on this now, Right. Through some kind of form of, you know, uh, you know, they're putting together their thesis of why this market is what, you know, legit. Right. Be it a doctor or just it just being whatever this, you know, this putting it together. So, yeah, I'm gonna post this for the back chat. You guys might want to read through this, but this is really great intel. Right. I got through a little bit of it. 
but really good information that lets you know, yeah, don't come to people house stepping just because you think they, you know, they're your skin folk and they're just supposed to cut your deal when the market's not really what relating that deal value that you're trying to get. You're paying for what you're going to get. Don't come half step just because it's a black man, right? Pay him his worth, right? The same way you would do it if you were getting it from a what? A white collector, right? So when we think about, again, just the value of it, the sneaker game has made it all the way up to one of the most premier auctioneers listed on the planet. Because y'all heard me speak about some of these many times. Uh, y'all know I'm going to collect a lot of different things in that mind. I know where the places are, where they go where a lot of these major, major auctioneer houses, you know, reside at, and Sotheby's is one of them, right? They are, they have an, a very elaborate portfolio, like a Berkshire Hathaway, even higher than even Berkshire Hathaway, if you think about it, right? Berkshire Hathaway just has their hands in many different things, but Sotheby's is very exquisite about what they collect, right? And so uh, a lot of things that they offer on Sotheby's is like, you know, you're getting 100% authenticity and it's going to be somewhat of the creme to the creme to that regard. Of course, this auction house has been in business since 1744, right? Whatever, whether that matters or not, but they know what they know at this point. So some of the stuff they offer on Sotheby's is in also in likeness of that we were talking about for StockX and many others. This is that upper echelon, right? Uh, where you would go to find that level of what? Exclusivity, right? So look here. A lot of the stuff that they have on here, I mean, you know who's coming to this website, right? <laughs> right? The Kanye's and the, the, your, your rappers or your local what? You know, local homeboy on the street that know where to go get it, right? I mean, a next level type of what? Shopper, essentially, right? We're talking about being able to get something that's totally, totally what? Exclusive. And the prices of these shoes, 23000 23, you know, 1000 for these old Nike, what? Low Travis, low Travis Scott's here, right? Some of these, you could probably find them on um on the same value of a stock set, stock X. Uh, look at this, Mike, look at the Michael J. Fox dual sign Nike mag, mag back to what? Back to the future, 2011. Look at $88,000 for those. Mm-hmm. I mean, think about that, right? You're talking about Back to the Future, right? It's with Mick Fly, right? With Mick Fly. <laughs> Crazy, <laughs> right? $1.4 million, right? That's them what? Earliest known regular what? Regular season Jordan what? Them Jordan ones. Worn and signed, right? $1.4 million. Mm-hmm. I mean, think about that, guys. It's crazy, right? And so again, just the idea of that, right? So you see the, the the Louis Vuitton size five, right? The air, right? We know, you know, Oberkris spoke to that in terms of, uh, you know, the designer, right? In itself, just now he's made a new lane for himself, you know, because of the fact of his what his rarities. And so again, a lot of things on here, coach, you can see on here where you know that sneaker game is very serious. It made it up to Sotheby's. If you know anything about Sotheby's, you know you don't come here, you know, with you know two dollars in your bank account. All right, that's a waste of time. Let you can do some window shopping, right? All right, and it's okay to look through, but you know, it's the real deal, right. right? So, just wanted to add that to that regard, you know, to to the bill here, because well, may some people may know or they may have an idea, you know, why you know, over Chris is in a position where you know uh, he can command that level of margin, and he's keeping this stuff fair value price because there's a what. Uh, Areas where you can go to kind of see within that window what some of the secrets may or may not be going for, right? So he's 100% giving you direct, you know, uh, authentic, honesty value what the market is showing you. And like I said, he's giving you the education that you're not going to get from what a lot of other people, right? When they post and stuff and they're not really giving you a whole lot of what backstory to it. So you don't know if you're getting what kind of getting yanked or not, right? So that in itself is great because, you know, he's really keeping you, you know, in the loop. And it's giving you some uh, that I think is very vital, especially when it comes to our side of, of the of the of the culture coin, because we love our sneakers. Because everything that you know these people are writing about in their papers or, or whatever, you know what they talk about when you talk about uh, collectible sneakers and culture of reselling. The culture has always been what black entertainment, black fashion. We dictate the culture. Let's not you know play games here. We're we're we are the trendsetters. I mean, you think about Dapper Dan. Right, Gucci had to snap or snatch him up because he was taking their products and their fabric and turning out, you know, clothes to celebrities to the layman's in a way that Gucci designers themselves, you know, could compete with. Right, so of course they had to make a play on Dapper. Right, hey, you know, let's see if we can find you, you know, some affiliation here, or whatever. Right, that in itself is just super, super awesome. Right, so again, because we dictate a lot of the fashion. Right, so I, I, I think that you know. Just adding that little bit to it, you know, to kind of going on my what, 
you know, my, my rent in, uh, uh, in relation to Oprah Chris here because he's doing something that, in my opinion, is like super, super awesome because he's utilizing the value to show you what they call revolving what investment cycles. He's taking his product value, right? Any value that he sells or profit value, he's funneling that right back into what? Another investment. He's always in the mind of what? Appreciation, 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 appreciation. See, that's a revolving though. That's how you build wealth, right? Where your money's working for you when you necessarily put, you know, the box of sneakers down at the end of the day, guess what? He's still making money, right? He still is in a position where that money is still working for him, right? The final value within that is still working because some word of mouth advocacy is going forward. And they saying, yeah, man, the brother, I saw a brother's page the other day, man, he got all type of J's on there. Who knew, right? He finna get him a new customer today. Right. And that's how this stuff works in that regard. Right. So consistency is the name of the game. It's base hits over home runs. And it's all about what? The reinvestment program. Right. Some people call it the drip dividend reinvestment program. You can call it the rip. Right. <laughs> right. Rip rip. Right. Reinvestment, whatever. Right. <laughs> program where he's utilizing this moment to kind of what? Move into other asset classes. Right. And I'll, I'll end it there. All right. Uh, but really, really good information over Chris. I just want to make sure I Add that little extra to it as well, because people don't really know the complexity of what you really got going on here. In my opinion, a lot of people, right? When they just think you're an average shoe dealer, you're not, you're much more than that. <laughs> <laughs> the local shoe dealer. Where you at, Chris? A absolutely, Oba, absolutely. And, you know, got to shout out Mo, uh, you know, because in my business, you know, my econ, you know, has taught me, you know, to be about business as well, you know, keeping receipts, you know, making sure you, you know, enter in, you know, all your information, all of the data, you know, and, you know, keeping a track of all that information. Because when you have a business, you know, the IRS looks for all of that stuff and you got to think about, all opportunities as being a business owner that you can take advantage of. Like she talked about earlier and always talks about, you know, your travel, your mileage, all those things are important. And, you know, it all started with my econ. So got to give salute to that. Yeah. So, um, and my, and can't forget the cash flow manager. As Cash flow manager, yeah, you're right. Because I Keep do it coming expenses, and I, and I tell a lot of people, you know, they always the things that will help your business and help you get those deductions are the things that you don't want to pay for. You know, there's many people out there they're using subscriptions. Um, you have a subscription for everything, but the subscriptions that matter, like a mileage log or a simple accounting system, especially if you don't know how or you're not savvy enough to do it manually. But these are the things that prove that you're actually doing business. And so when you get audited or you are asked about business, and I'm talking about people who are expanding, doing big things, you know, wanting to work the system of the tax deductions, and they ask, you know, what type of accounting system are you using? You should be able to either say, QuickBooks, um, ADP, Paycheck, Gusto, Tax Slayer books, something. You should be able to say something, uh, cash flow manager. Why? Because it shows that you're actually uh, monitoring your income and expenses or your assets, liabilities, or what's coming in as opposed to saying, what's that? You know, I didn't know that was important. So what what gives a person an indication that you're actually, your business is legit, uh, you know, knowing, having a particular accounting system. Now you don't have to have this. It's just my recommendation and what gets people to pay attention to you. Um, uh, having, you know, being able to uh, understand where your deductions come from. So like a lot of people, they rant and rave about taxes, right? And I'd be like, man, I've been in my econ since 2016. And ever since I got in my econ and I've been tracking my income expenses, except, especially those expenses that are uh, common, the car and, uh, car and truck expense, advertising, supplies, office supplies, office expense, uh, travel, meal, uh, your travel, with it, it's, uh, your bills is involved. Um, 
those communications, because I use my cell phone all the time. People ring my phone off the hook, right? Those six right there, just that alone will give you back your, the money you spending in taxes. Like you are, you're using countless dollars. And so if you're not it deducting just that amount, if you're why? Because you don't want to pay the two hundred dollars to file self-employed. Are we serious? You can write that off too. <laughs> I don't understand, right? So most people, and and if you're making less than twenty thousand, then of course you should be filing a Schedule C. If you're making more than twenty thousand, then you probably want to move your LLC to an S corp because you'll get better tax deductions. And we could talk about that as we go along. And that's why I'm going to start doing the Tuesdays, no live type of deal again, right? Because that's where your bread and butter comes in. And so most people, I, I just have to start removing myself from certain conversations. I don't be wanting to be mean, but I'm like, okay, we've been live since 2000, at a minimum since 2017, giving out, the do's and the don'ts, the advantages and disadvantages of owning a business. If you don't own anything, why do you think all the favor is coming out towards business owners? And, and you know, I used to probably at some point been in that, that bracket where people say, oh, the elite, they don't understand all the business, you know, all the business owners, they don't got that problem, this, that, or whatever. But when I start benefiting, I don't see any of that no more. I just kind of be in the corner like, uh, they ain't talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody will be having tax issues. I just be like, y'all ain't get it yet. <laughs> you know? And I've even was listening to a CPA the other day. He said, um, okay, you don't, you scared to invest. You think you're gonna lose your money. Okay, put the money in the account anyway and just don't invest it at all. At least you won't be getting taxed on that money right now because it'll be sitting in some type of investment account. Like, come on, are we serious? Like, what are you people thinking about? It was so funny when he said that, right? Because I get people all the time and boy, they just, it just kind of goes over their head. You could have kind of gradually lowered yourself into the stash the stash debit card or the acorn debit card or robin hood or m1 i noticed someone in the back of our investment bet chat asked about credit i did respond because i was i was i was laughing to myself because i said wow you know i remember chris used to post all the time about the self app he's supposed self 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 and he hadn't posted it in, in a while and it goes to show you how you never know who's new amongst you or maybe just wasn't paying attention at that time or didn't think it was significant enough to inquire. But you should always just continue to advertise different products and services that you're a part of because somebody someday is watching. As A.E. just said, you know, you probably just earn yourself some sales based off of all you know the publicity or the advertisement of your company and the different as a matter of fact i sent my um i sent my friend and like i was like did you see those sneakers that chris just posted <laughs> those are size 12s <laughs> he just showed he already got them on hand <laughs> you know but um it just goes to show you how you hang around like-minded people. You get all this wealth of information. And oh my God, you know, African Emporium just, I, I'd be trying to figure out like how he get all this information in his head and he just keep it and it just keeps going and on and on. But anyway, I'm glad he's my friend <laughs> or whatnot. I'm going to. <laughs> <I'm bond too. laughs> I keep saying we peer, we're going to get this, this knowledge and this money together. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, and and and, I, and I'm ecstatic on how it, you know how everybody has grown over over the years and over time, and how you're able to off, offer such um, knowledge information. And I remember when Chris first, you know, was getting into it, getting in, and he would he would talk, but he would just be talking mad trash and want to beat people up on the streams. But then now you hear Chris talk, man, he's just business oriented. He he has this thing streamlined. He can talk the talk. He can tell you where to go, how to go, why he doing what he doing. As A just said, is a difference in buying from Chris and buying from another shoe vendor. Why? Because he can tell you why, how, what's going on with it, you know, and all this stuff they just talked about. And I was just like in awe. Like, I didn't do that. As we like to say, what, why, where, when. 
Yes. What fundamentals why we- and the technical. See, that's that's what yeah. separates every great business per, uh, business business owner, right? That mm-hmm. the, you know, you can take that sale from it just being okay. I got a product. You got a, 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 a you know a demand. We could facilitate the sale, but when you get that education, when you get the understanding of how the you know how things came about. That makes people again. It helps build that fun, like we spoke about. So you're right in his ass this morning. Oh yes, like he's. I mean, he got it. He's all over it. And I, and I would recommend you if you're interested. Now, here's here's what I want people to understand, especially as we go through these um, next few weeks, and we talk about individuals. Talk to individuals who are in business and have really organically. Cre- as um, AE put up, uh, created a funnel for themselves um, and making business work for them is lucrative. You know, they're profiting, they're increasing their network. Is that it's not a Michael, we said it all the time, and our um, Ujau says this a lot it's not microwavable. But guess what? If you start somewhere and you trust the process, you do your due diligence. You stay amongst the end of stay to know with individuals who are in that industry. You know, maybe you want to participate in some trade shows. Maybe you want to go to that industry conferences, get into the know of what's going on. Then guess what? You too will be a year out or 18 months out like Chris is, and you will be able to brag on your profits. Like that's a beautiful thing. How do you feel, Chris? Like when your numbers start going up, because I heard what you said you made last year. I'm still hating on that number. And I was like, oh, <laughs> he's doing the damn thing. Like, okay, Chris, I see you with the sneakers. And then, you know, people will sit back and they'll see vendors like, um, you know, people who go to the flea market or maybe people who doing online sales. And you would sit back and you'd think like, wow, these people are not doing anything. Uh, I remember, I think it was um, Marquise talked about selling Xboxes or something like that on eBay or something, right? Reselling that stuff and how much mm-hmm. money he's making. And so, mm-hmm. you, you know, you sit back and you're looking, you're like, wow, you know, are they really making money? Are oh, you a downplay it? Let's, let's take it from a relationship perspective, right? So you run, I run across this fella, he's talking about I'm selling sneakers. And be like, oh, okay, you know, and you'll think that, okay, this dude, that fella ain't got no money, huh? And you'll be surprised because that person probably sitting in the corporate world full of debt, full of debt. Right, got a nice job, but he's full of debt. But that person, that entrepreneur out there, got his business doing this thing, making profits. You downplaying because he's an entrepreneur and you over there going for corporate, and he's the one making the money, right? And not only is he making it, he knows how to invest for his future so that he can ha- he can have money stored up. So he's investing in cash producing assets that's going to be revolving and making him more money. like wow, like we really really have to sit back and process. So I want people to sit back. You know, when, you, when you're listening um, to the lives, whether you listen to AE Lives on African Emporium's channel, whether it's one or two, or you listen to Urban Economic Empowerment Show for wherever I'm live streaming at, or you listening to someone else out there, right? Think about your business and the information that they're saying and how can it enhance your business? What in these nuggets, whether you're taking it from advertising perspectives, you're taking the e-commerce and you're taking a technology. Like one of the things I'm getting ready to do, you guys know, I think um, maybe two years ago or right before the pandemic, I was talking a lot about the feeding programs. And uh, so the, the program that we're creating now, we're going to use QR codes and an app and QR codes to track, to try to eliminate the paper trail, right? Because um, that kind of gets caught up in this whole fraudulent thing and all that great stuff, right? So we can use QR codes to scan every time someone get a meal. Um, it would help keep accountability for that. Um, the data would be ready and available. You don't have to worry for somebody to count it. All that great stuff, right? So I reached out to Ujau because he just put his app out um, for his university. So I was like, yo, did you create your own app? And if so, are you interested in creating one for us? So as we see our brothers and sisters out there have these great business ventures going on or have these gifts and talents, you know, I think someone, you know, when they talk about buy from your own, these are the areas that I look at to get with my own, um, own, own peers and their gifts and knowledge in reference to business, whether uh, it's building apps, um, whether it's uh, making websites more user-friendly to the audience, 
Uh, everybody should have a, a website these days because they offer free domains. Now, if you want to get all jazzy and take payments and things of that nature, you have to upgrade to the premium. But for starters, you could get a, you could create a free website and you could do it yourself because they got templates. All you got to do is change the name, upload your logo, add your product, and boom, you in there. <laughs> or, mm-hmm. you know, you can use your social medias as well, but you can integrate them in, you know. So it's, oh my God, these these are the think tank times um, that I like to be a part of. I appreciate, definitely appreciate, Chris. You got any uh, closing remarks? I don't want to make the video very long because I want people to actually be able to go and listen to some of the things you said and AE said that will help them uh, drug their their mem- or their mind to ask you questions in your inbox. Uh, so I would say in closing, as you said, you know, and over AE said, you know, being being in the right circle around the right people, you know, that you can you know, share information, share ideas. As Oba AE always says, Ubuntu, I am because we are. Once you have a circle like that, you know, everybody, you know, becomes successful, you know, in their own endeavors and, you know, endeavors together. So I would just say, you know, find you, like you used to say, Mo, find you a team in whatever year it is. And, you know, (laughs) stick with that team and grow. You say find one, Chris, no matter what year it is. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know we mind. keep graduating with the years, right? So <laughs> I got I got the new one, right? Get your crew in 2022. I'll just I'll yes. right? you go. <laughs> get your crew in 2022. Right, right? on. Yeah. Right right on. <laughs> That's a shirt moment right there. That's a yeah. shirt. Yeah. T-shirt That's moment. Shirt. T-shirt. <laughs> T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and speaking of shirts, man, shout out to Andre, man, brother Andre, you know, with Passport Global, you know, because I was wearing a lot of my shirts in his, in my, uh, one of his shirts in my, in my videos, you know, showing us different shoes. So shout out to that brother, man. And I, I actually look up him, up to him too, because he's a, he's a premier investor, premier investor, man. Love Andre, all the dollars he drops. <laughs> Yeah. Definitely, definitely. So I'm gonna have to get all y'all in here, uh, one by one, um, so y'all can share your beautiful businesses and how you guys are doing it and your processes. And hopefully, you know, someone hit you up. This is all about, you know, I, 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 um, I used to think about phases of my life and like at what point, you, because like some people say, oh man, we don't have no more elders, you know, and, and I've been watching, like I watch a lot of the Nigerian movies and, and, you know, they have like their council and, you know, anytime they get ready to make a decision, the king, they bring the council and all that. And they bring it together. I was like, man, at what point, you know, you should actually start sharing your knowledge and teaching your knowledge as far as you being a parent whatever phases that you are and, and so you know you have your you have your younger people the teens are under and then you have your 20 years your 30 years you have 40 years so i'm thinking like once you get to like your 40s you should be advising the younger who are coming underneath you because some people once they're in their 40s they probably have if they're working on a job they've they've got at least 20 plus years or 15 plus years under their belt let's say 10 plus years of work and knowledge under their belt. And um, so I was doing some research because I'm thinking about putting some um, classes together for uh, some uh, transitioning college students or just students in general. And I noticed um, AE where they have, uh, it used to be knowledge, skills, and abilities when you were getting ready to transition from the military to civilian life, and you put your resume together, you know, these are you applying for a job, any DOD job, you know, they'll, they'll have your knowledge, skills, and abilities that they are asking you questions on. But now I notice they're saying knowledge, skills, and behavior. Mm. And Very- that's interesting too, because, you know, given the back, you know, drop of what's been going on for as military in terms of how it's, it is evolved on the back end of all the, you know, the PSTD and uh, well, uh, the PS, uh, post traumatic, uh, traumatic stress, the PTSD, I'm talking about PSTD. <laughs> I'm talking about, I'm thinking about my other PMCS check, but the mm-hmm. ideal of that now is because again, you know, a lot of veterans, of course, when I came out, you know, uh, of course I came out before you did, but just, you know, how the military has morphed since then, right. Uh, being mm-hmm. able to kind of really 
uh, compartmentalize a lot of the skill sets that come along with a service member, right? Uh, and how that transfers into the civilian sector, right? Even from college credits, because you know, you went through that, I'm sure you did on the education side, you already got so many credits just by your training you get from the military that's, you know, universe right. will accept right out the gate, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, from a, a litany of different programs, of course, if you go into, you know, into a certain, you know, program in college, right? Whatever your degree is, so to speak, right? But that right. behavior aspect of it is very interesting. Uh, you know, when you think about it, right? Uh, on the grand scheme of things in that regard. So, uh, but yeah, I, that's, yeah, we might, yeah, we might want to build on that one day, do a, maybe speak to that. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe we can get some military personnel in too that's still got boots on the ground as well. Or who may be getting ready to transition, of course, you know, because, you know, my household is close to that at some point. We, you know, we <laughs> right up in, that. <laughs> in its own right. And, uh, and you know, that's another conversation. We were just having a conversation literally the other day about, you know, where we at in that. You know, do we, you know, go a little further, right? Because, you know, she's close to getting the full bird, right? Ooh, um, go yeah. ahead. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, yeah. that's literally just one school away because you know this stuff, Sister Monica, like you know, yeah. with B not A not up that chain, same way it's on that with non commission side and the commission side, right? Right, but it's literally one away from that, you know. That's that's it, you know, and that's that's great because you think about it culturally when we say our people being in places and spaces, yes. think about that how how many you see, how many you know, black women, literally, mm. you know, you see <laughs> carrying that, you know. <laughs> And most time we see that when you see these prestigious people on TV or this is so and so, you know, of the what of the Navy and that you know these, you know the few black women we seen recently who made that kind of look pinnacle, right? Uh, yeah. When they made it to those high seats, you know, and admirals and this, that, and the third, uh, which is to be celebrated because again it, it offers that level of inspiration for those youngers, right? Uh, and where you can still be yourself mm. and, and be in those spaces, right? You didn't have to convert everything about you to be part you know in that right your skills got you there and so you okay. can retain your culture intact is my point y- y'all get what i'm saying without you, me having to say it, right? it. <laughs> you better yeah I, I gotta say that because y'all know what it's like because y'all know me right like, you know because look you know i'm not the most perfect being on the planet you know in that regard you know and i will say this but you know having that level like we talk about the idea of funnels of being with you know Uh, being able to add value to one another, right? Uh, Not just from a homebound perspective, but on a culture side of things, that's why programs like this exist, right? It's called urban economic empowerment. Now, the value of what we're doing here collectively is not only sedentary for what? uh, Urban expansion, right? This We want to reach out people, but we're bigger than just an urban environment, right? Well, I sell something to anybody, right? (laughs) Right, of course. Right, don't get it twisted. I'm sure over over Chris as well. Right, you as well. So, money, your services expand more than just our people, but the extent of the direct value of the messaging is detailed for a lot of what our people because we need funnels, quote unquote funnels, to help us be able to facilitate information better. Right, people to unpack it for you, so you don't feel pressure and stress when you go into other places to get it, and they're not trying to what railroad you or take advantage of you. That's why this channel exists. Right. That's why this channel exists. So I say hats off to everybody who realizes that. And again, we speak about the idea that we can have black professionals in places where we can co-mingle with people who are up you know, on their journey. Right. Does not make them less than they're just on their journey. Right. Everybody's time is sometimes different. That's life. Right. But it doesn't negate that person's interest level. As I like to say, there's no such thing as permanent this or permanent that. There's only permanent interest. Your interests are what get you out of bed every day. Right. That's what keeps you hungry. Right. Without that, of course, you are what you're a dead man walking. Right. So shout out to people who have, you know, interest driven, you know, uh, you know, hunger and passion. Stay on that journey, stay on that path and you'll get what you want. Mm-hmm. Yes. I just want to thank you all, though. Thank you all and appreciate you all for everything. Oh, well, thank you, guys. I'm Bantu. Peace, Father Prophet David. Thank you guys for tuning in in the chat. Those who came through. Let me see if I can give me some shout outs. Deshaun Shepherd, thank you for coming on through here. Brother Mathis, Brother Sar, the great. Thank you for chiming in on the chat. What's new? Peace, Power, and Prophet to all of you all who uh, offer this information. Coffee, Brown, um, JKA. Thanks for the cash out. Hey, Brother E. Hey, e. Thanks for the super chat. And Marquise. 
Thanks for the super chat, showing love. Brother Kevin Johnson for the cash app. Thank you very much, Sonny. Uh, who else we got? Everything is everything. Six fingers. Jay Vandoon. Hey, Jay Vandoon. I see you in a long while. Uh, who else we got? Marquise, Rich B. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Yes. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Marquise. Thank you for the super chat. Um, Brandon, of course, those who are on the panel. Thank you all for tuning in. DeAndre, thanks to you as well. Um, but I can't for you. you uh, well, I don't know. I, I went by, beyond my little two hours by 16 minutes. No, this is great. <laughs> no, this is great. But, but this, you know, in itself, this is what we we build on because it's another form of macroeconomics. It's a form of micro and macroeconomics, right? All wrapped up into one because it's speaking to the ideal of what? The ideal of the what? The investment side of this. Right, the business right. aspect to this, uh, income producing assets, right? Mm -hmm. Business management, right? I mean, you literally touch every portion of that and then some, um, which is great because again, you know, what better is you know moment uh, that we can speak about in this time is and we're dealing with what current events that are what plaguing certain people, right? So he's showing you how he's navigating his business doing what this so-called downtime in the economy, right? That given the fact that we got a, what a negative GDP number that came out today, right? A negative what 1.6. Last quarter we had what negative what 1.5. So technically we are in a what recession. <laughs> in a recession. Now y'all notice how they they skipped over saying that a lot today on a lot of these news medias. They yes, basically ignore those numbers. <laughs> I said, look at the rats. Okay, they are gonna play that game. All right, but again, you know, we go, we know what's going on. I'll just say that we we know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah so what i'll do of course like i said i was just gonna speak to the ideal of stocks uh but I, like i said i don't want to make this longer than it was because this was a very potent scenario mm -hmm. if anything we'll close this one out and start another one uh we right. just run it straight back on the same channel here because i don't want to do nothing special on my side it's just you know at this point we can just speak about the market in terms of where we are you know give it a quick little moment you know brush over and we can get on out of here uh, but, but i do want to end this on a high note and i think we need to cut this one here because this was great information right because i will be downloading this this myself and putting it in my archives yes okay so you want so you uh okay so y'all want me to start another one send the link yes yes okay. and then we'll just speak strictly about you know market value and stuff like that okay cool all right peace power and profit everybody we'll see you in a few minutes thanks power and profit peace power and profit everybody